set this right here. So I need to still get some things set up for y'all. That way I can wait for people to jump on while still getting things together. All right, I'm gonna let people come on in because I actually still have some things I need to set up, but I wanna be a woman of my word. So I decided to go ahead and start, excuse the mess while I still try to set up, because um, I need this tripod because I'm gonna be doing this with y'all. So, well, well demonstrating. Cause you don't know you didn't know i was gonna start this but i'm gonna go ahead actually i think it would be fine at that height i think about it all righty grab this over here See if we can move some of the bubbles activity and chalk activity out the way. Hello, who's the hate to This is what you've been asking for. I don't know for how long you've been asking for me to do this. So look at that. Look at look at how God works. <laughs> Look at how God worked things out. He worked it out. He worked it out. All right. If you can, once you get on, please share. Because I feel like I feel like this information, if it may not be useful for you at the moment, then I know for sure it's useful to somebody you know. Especially during this time in our lives. I'm sure it is useful to somebody. So, share, share, share. Share, share, share if you can. I'm gonna just come up here for a minute. Oh, it's a nice day. It is a nice day today. I'll be starting one in a few months. Well, look at that. Look at that. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. It bless you and it blesses your, your family. All right, we got six people watching. I can't, I can't tell who that you are, but if you want to say something, that'd be good, cause then I'll know who in the room with us. Christy Edwards, hello. I remember you, Christy. Okay, I'm excited. Share, share, share. Share, 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 share. Sharing is caring and health is wealth. And so when you sharing something like this, you're sharing the wealth. A lot of people always try to figure out, um, during, especially at times like these or when you feel like you are helpless, you, you know someone needs some help, but you necessarily can't do anything for them financially. Uh, a lot of times, one of the best things to do is share information. Share information. So go ahead and press share and share the wealth. Health is wealth. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I'm excited. All right. Here we go, y'all. Well, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, uh, my name is L.A. Bonds. And welcome to Likewise Living, where... Uh, 
this is a haven for those who are seeking to live their life uh, biblically, live their life out loud, live their life in a way that pleases God. Um, and so uh, if I were to come from a scripture, I would necessarily come from the scripture um, at the beginning when God made uh, the world. And in that in that beginning was a wonderful garden and um, Adam and Eve, the first people that walked the earth, lived off that garden. And I'm a firm believer that everything that God has grown still to this day, that we could live, we can live off of it uh, that comes from the earth. So I wanted to start this video and more than likely this is going to become a series. Uh, I wanted to start it. Let me tell you the real thing, the real truth. My godmother passed away two days ago. And um, one thing, her name is Gloria Hawkins. She has been in my life for years. Um, but something she used to always tell me, she encouraged me all the time. And it used to bug me sometimes, but there was other times where it spurred me on and it was exactly what I needed to hear. But she used to tell me this, uh, live out loud. She used to say, Krista, live out loud. I even had text messages, even on my voicemail, that is her telling me those things. Make sure you live your life out loud. She used to always encourage me to do that simply because um, I was doing things, just like there's many people that are doing things, especially right now, that are completely countercultural. Uh, culture tells you, Go to the store, hoard, do this, do that. But those of us who are doing things counterculturally are kind of getting back to the basics, going back to the beginning of things. And Gloria used to know that I used to be very ashamed and feel very much um, out of place. So I never would share information such as what I'm about to share with you now, simply because of the fear that I will be ostracized, that I will be ridiculed. And I've been ridiculed. My, my best friends know for sure the ridicules that I have endured simply from doing things the way that I want to do them. Um, and, and it made me clam up. That's the truth of the matter. Clam up. Not want to tell anybody anything. Not want to, you know, risk um, the approval of others but in order to honor my mother I want to be about what I said I was gonna do and every time she would tell me live out loud I say oh yeah I'm gonna do that I'm doing that or I'm gonna do that or I'll tell her I'm gonna write this book she was like okay good just make it live out loud do this and, do, and I'll be like okay yeah but you know what? I will procrastinate. And there are going to be people in your life that's going to encourage you to do something. Even this moment right here. You may see this and you know deep down in your heart that you need to go about growing your own food. It may be because of your own health. It may be because of someone that you love. It may be because for financial reasons. All of those were the, the reasons why I even started gardening 10 years ago. But for whatever reason it is, don't ignore the words. Don't, don't put off the encouragement because they're there for a reason. They're to keep you going. They're, they are there. Those people are there to spur you on. The Bible gives us a, a, wonderful, a wonderful saying, stir up the gifts. And today I am stirring up that gift. I made a determination that I'm not going to sit on these things that I know is beneficial for other people. For some of you that's looking at this video and would like to judge it, because it's going, I'm going to put it on another page on my YouTube channel too. If you feel like, you know, you want to scroll and troll and be negative, this ain't for you. It's all right. Go on about your business. But for those of us that won't, to learn this this is for you
this is for you. All right. And um, I know for a fact I'm making my mother proud. And and this this right here, this right here was something that she wanted me to do years ago. So I'm gonna do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> so as the caption says, how to start a garden for your family for under $35. A lot of people think gardening is expensive. Uh, but I want to share this one thing. Medical bills are way more expensive than most things. Okay. Um, I started off gardening for the reason of my husband was sick. My husband was diagnosed with a skin condition. And the skin condition was turning his brown, deeply melanated, fine self into a very light skinned brother in different patches and in different stages. When he sought uh, professional help, we were told that that, con that skin condition was not reversible, that it will soon take over his entire body. Of course, this set us back um, emotionally. We we didn't know because it took us by you know took us by surprises. What are you talking about? This where did this come from? How did this go? And what we learned is is that um, he had a deficiency, um, and it was in his immune system. There was an immune deficiency that was causing this skin disease, and. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. It took me for a loop because when you see someone that you love go through something that is almost, it's almost like they cannot control it. They don't know. We, you don't know what to do. Only thing you know is what the hospital says. And you look at these medicines and the medicine bills and the physical and the, and the exam bills. And you're wondering, Lord, why, you know, what is, what do you want? What do we make of this? And, um, I remember distinctively praying and saying, God, show me, show me what, what, what is it that you want us to do? And that same day, within that same prayer, I felt deep in my heart, uh, God, let me know to plant gardens. He actually said the word, he said, he will eat from your hands. My husband grew up not eating fresh vegetables N never N uh, you name it never fresh so he was deficient of the vitamins that a lot of vegetables carry and so when i'm in this prayer time and i hear the lord press upon my heart to go ahead and plant some things and and he distinctively say he'll eat it from your hands it's not necessarily like me feeding him what he was saying is he will eat it if you give it to him I'm going to give you the knowledge to do what you need to do. And uh, long story short, uh, I began planting seeds. And I promise y'all, it was seeds. We started off with seeds. And I planted things such as carrots, bell peppers, three herbs, okay? And I planted like a lettuce, a leafy, a leafy green. Within a month and a half which if you think about it that's still time you're going back and forth to the doctors still new patches old patches becoming larger you know different things and my husband works in a corporate america so uh we was putting makeup on him so that he won't feel you get what i'm saying that type of that type of feeling when he's out in public and so uh <laughs> a month and a half later i started you know, going through my harvest. And the reason why I'm saying, telling you this story, because we're going to, I'm going to walk you through a lot of different things that I'm about to, that I did. And this was quick. A month and a half is very quick. If, if, if you know, if you know anything about vegetables or anything, and even if you don't know, a month and a half is very quick. You can get a lot in a month and a half. Okay. However, going back to my story is I started gleaning from my garden and incorporating what I grew into the dishes that already he was already eating. So um, 
Oh, and I eliminated uh, I eliminated a lot of the seasonings and started using my herbs as the seasoning. And when I tell y'all that right there, I just made I just made them some gravy with some meatballs, and they don't even know ain't no salt in it. It's garlic, it's uh, rosemary, thyme, oregano stuff that's from the garden, right? But they don't know it's no other seasonings. But anyway, I said that to say you can you can cook stuff and it can be amazing. It can be healthy and nutritious. Um. A month and a half later, I started working, putting those foods into the our our meals, and y'all, by the end of that half month, there was one whole patch that had its melanin replenished. Like it, it was it was back. So from that moment on, I made a decision that I'm gonna just flood this man with as many vegetables as I can to see. If this thing is really working and when I tell y'all within four months all of his melanin had been replenished there there's not a spot even to this day there's not a spot on his body that has that life uh, it's called Villalagro that has that condition when we even try to tell the professionals the medical professionals this information y'all they didn't even want to know it they wanted to keep promoting the 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 stuff that they had creams and uh uh what you call it, elixirs and different things to work on your immune system but all we did was grow things from the earth honey things that god has provided for us already and it replenished it built up his immune system so i said all that to say i know right now everyone is panicked about their immune system trying to figure out ways to 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 build their immune system i'm gonna tell you right this from the earth what you need is in the earth it's in the earth vegetables fresh vegetables don't cook your vegetables down you know i know everybody like to eat them collard greens that's cooked all the way down no everybody want to eat that garlic it's cooked it almost look brown no Sometimes you're going to have to just bite that garlic and that be a cure for your body. I'm telling you right now what I know. I'm not making nothing up. I'm not making anything up. These are things that I know for sure. All right. I said all that, but we need to go ahead and get into, into what we need to get done today. A lot of y'all came on this page to find out how do I start a garden in LA with $35? Because this don't seem, this seems impossible. This don't seem right. All right. First things first. Who's that? Look at Chantel. Now, I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all don't know this. Well, a lot of people do know it, actually. Chantel, the one that taught me a lot of other things that I did not know about gardening. When I tell you this girl, she is she younger than me, honey, but she know a lot. She know a lot. Uh, you, can, you can pop over on her page and ask her, bug her, bug her, all the questions you need. Okay. Well, you can ask me, though. All right, first things first, from Dollar Tree, from Dollar Tree, you can get you one of these. I was about to sit down, but I thought about it. I don't need to. Get you a stack of cups, okay? These, get these stacks of cups, regular plain plastic stacks of cups, okay? Now, I went ahead and drilled with my drill just some holes, small holes, in the stacks of cups, let me see if I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. See that? See that right there? So those are some draining holes. I would recommend four or five draining holes at the bottom of your cup. She said, you crazy. Girl, you know I'm telling the truth. All right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this with y'all. So I'm about to try to figure out a way where I can prop this up so that you can see me do this because I need to get some seeds in the ground anyway I need to get some seeds started let me say that first I need to get some seeds started so I'm going to I brought the tripod out here but y'all pray for me because I don't know if this tripod gonna get its life together she's talking about yes ma'am you making me proud she crazy yeah now okay all right I love me some Chantel. Everything about that woman I love. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Somebody say, let me know if you can hear me from right here. Because the 
I know the air is blowing. The wind is blowing. I said the air. The air is blowing. The wind is blowing. Duh. Can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Somebody say yes or no so I know if you can hear me or not. Can y'all hear me or no? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next thing, this right here is also available at your dollar store. This is just a regular tin pan. A lot of people use that for uh, cooking meals or the water pan for, you know, potlucks and stuff. So what we're going to do here is we are going to, um, oh, before we start that, what we need to do is we need to get our seeds out. So I recommend, I recommend getting five seeds, five different seeds. The seeds that I recommend are beets. And I'm going to tell you why for all of these. Are beets, peppers. So you can do like your, you can do any pepper. Your bell pepper, your jalapeno pepper, your cayenne pepper. You can go ahead and get some peppers. All right. A leafy green. I have lettuce and I have spinach. And these can be available at your, um local nursery or you can get them at walmart or target you see the prices there very inexpensive and in each of these there are at least 20 seeds so that's a lot when you think about it you when you go and buy a bundle of spinach from the grocery store it runs you close to three or four dollars but in one seed you can get a nice large bundle of spinach and the items that I'm going to go over today, these produce items, grow very fast. So you won't be waiting a long time for your harvest. When I tell you, you'll be able to be eating in a few weeks, okay? So get you some lettuce or some type of leafy green. So I have lettuce and I have um, spinach. All right. Get these other spinaches out the way. Green beans, okay, get you a green bean pack, and then get you some herbs. So this is cilantro, this is one of my favorite herbs. I use that herb pretty much all the time. And then last but not least, I would say get you some type of fruit, fruit. Um, watermelon is one of those fruits that when it grows when it grows it's exciting but if you allow it to grow as long as it can it will really be worth it and i mean and I'm when i'm telling you one how one seed can grow a big sweet watermelon and you, i'm telling you know you're eating eating a wonderful watermelon that you grew yourself on the fourth of july it's nothing like it it's so rewarding okay so um those are the ones i have here i'm gonna list um hopefully in the comments um the other seeds the other seeds that i will recommend is getting carrots carrots grow extremely fast as well as radish all right so we're going to go ahead first with our cups that we have already drainage we're going to use a sharpie pen we're going to use a Sharpie pen and we're going to write on our cups our items that we're going to plant. So I'm going to write cilantro on this one. I'm writing cilantro on a few of them because I'm growing a lot of it. Okay, I'm going to put spinach on this one. And I'm sitting these in this pan on purpose. Just a simple way to contain what I have um, in case I want to move it around. It helps me keep things mobile. All right. 
lettuce. You said, what did you say? Watermelon. Yeah, I don't know, Chantel. I know you live up north. And and being down south, we got a lot more heat. So I'm I'm wondering if that has more to do with anything. Um, because honey, it, it get hot here. These watermelons that I have grown these past years, honey, it, it they growing. They growing. All right. So we're gonna do green beans. Matter of fact, I just made green beans. Green beans and um, some rice. I haven't made uh, homemade meatballs in such a long time, so I did it today. <laughs> My family like, woo! Um, I'm going to put the bell peppers on here. No need to be fancy. You know. We just getting this done. What I like about gardening also is it becomes relaxing. It becomes relaxing. For me, I, I enjoy being outside in nature. I love these beets, y'all. What's funny is I'm from Detroit. And you see this? It say Detroit red beets. I've never paid attention to this, but this is the exact kind that I like to eat and that I like to have um, when it's juiced. Um, but I, I've never noticed that until uh, recently. I'm like, it say Detroit red beets. Isn't that coincidental? Okay. That don't mean nothing. Okay. That may mean nothing to you, but it's, it's all good. Anyway, uh, gardening is so relaxing to me. It's so relaxing to me. Um, it can be a stress reliever. You can come out here and get some fresh air. You can, um, just, you know, talk with God, have some prayer time. That's what I do. A lot of times I'll be in the garden, um, and just watching something grow makes me feel like I'm growing, you know, and some things I can look at something that I know was buried in dirt and understand that the sun is growing what's done. And it's all about understanding how sowing and reaping works those types of things those types of stuff encourage me it it gives me hope it builds my faith okay looking at looking at things grow so uh yeah i just wanted to share that just in case someone's looking for outlets to to relieve stress and stuff like that all right i'm almost done labeling my cups I need to be specific because I have two different types of watermelon here. This one is called uh, Jubilee, and then these are called Charleston Gray. So you definitely want to make sure you're if you're if you have two type of varieties of something, you need to make sure you're labeling that, just so you know the proper way to take care of it. Okay. All right. How many of you already have a garden? Already have a garden or know somebody that has a garden and you just you just have been looking for some advice on gardening and growing things. Let me see what you got to say in the comments. Oh, I see my friend Althea saying something. Let me when I'm done with this, Althea, I promise I'm gonna come look at what you got. Okay, I think I think I have about two or three of everything here. But if not, if not, um, that's all right. I can always get it together. 
when the video's not running, right? Get it together and add, add what I need to. All right. Next, we're going to get ourselves some organic. Or it doesn't have to be organic, but you need to get yourself some potting soil. Okay? Potting soil. Some uh, good container mix. The reason why I like this type of mix is because it is rich already in compost. Okay? It has everything you need already in the bag. Every single thing you need. And I think a lot of people, I remember when I first started off, I used to think, I could just go outside, get some dirt from the ground, and put it in the pot. Or put it in a cup. Little did I know is that the dirt from the ground has a way that it already airs. And because it's in the earth, it has its own way of aerating. But when something is inside a container, it does not. And so, even if you do have the drainage hose, that's really for water. But the dynamic thing about potting mix is if you're using any type of container, it already has a, a mixture of things that creates that same um, dynamic with the soil. So, it's mixed in things that are very light, like... Hi. Hi. What are you talking about? Oh, you're I'm, on, I'm on my uh, video. mixed in things that are very light like peat moss uh, those types of things retain moisture but keep the air flowing throughout your throughout your container no matter what size it is okay all right so we're gonna open up this bag and you know what I just remembered I need my shovel I have a small shovel over here buried in rocks give that forgive that uh that journey to get up Let me get over here and get my shovel down. I'm the type of person that likes to stick my things into the ground. It keeps them sharp. And so right here you'll see I keep these things pretty much buried. And it keeps the, keeps the blades of everything very sharp. Um, some people do bring their things into tool sheds. But uh, things that I use out in the garden, I like to keep them in the earth. Um, especially tools that are sharp so that they may remain sharp, not get dull, as well as when you have a lot of kids, not be used for anything else. Like me, my kids will see a shovel and think, oh, I can take this into the tub and play, you know, water play. All right. <laughs> Which is nothing wrong, but you know, when you want your stuff, you want your stuff to be taken care of. All right, so... We're gonna get our, just our regular potty mix. This potty mix, this size, and this is a, let me tell you how many cubic cubic feet this is. This is one cubic feet foot of um, potty mix, a very good size bag. Uh, this will be up under $10. So if you go to your Walmart and um, your Target, any type of nursery also, this will be these bags these potty mix bags will be under ten dollars in fact i know i was just at lowe's and lowe's had um a potty mix that was four dollars so y'all we still we still have not reached twenty dollars matter of fact we haven't even reached fifteen dollars with the things that we have already had because this pan was what a dollar these cups was what a dollar and that came with 50 in those in that pack alone 50 i think was in that pack yep 50 cups alone in that pack. This, not even $10. So you got, you're talking about, now we're all together, it's, it looks like we're talking about just $10. And I guess if you want to count the Sharpie pen, but most people already have this in their house. We're talking about just with those tools right there alone, that's $10. And then you add in your seeds, right? You add in your seeds and Depending on how many seeds you want, but right now what we chose was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seeds, all ranging around a dollar and some change. So now we're talking about close to nine, eight or nine dollars, right? We still haven't hit twenty dollars yet. Okay, so let's jump in here. 
We're going to get our soil. Okay. And we're just going to fill that cup up. And it don't have to be filled to the brim. You see what I'm saying? That's that spinach cup. And we're just going to fill that up. Quicker way you can do this. You can do one of these numbers. And if you have children, this will be a fun job right here. This job that we're doing right here will be fun. Also, labeling will be another fun job to do. What I have found very fascinating, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen in the, in the picture that this was advertised on Facebook, is my sons, my two oldest sons, I have four sons. Um, they love, they love participating with this experience with gardening. And, and, and I think they mostly enjoy that they can be a part of something that, um, the family needs. My family in particular, they love produce. We go through produce fast. Um, so, uh, after my husband was healed from from that skin condition was healed uh -oh, was healed from that skin condition through what god provided in the garden um i decided you know let me look into some other things that would be good to grow and i didn't want to start growing things that i knew we didn't eat because then that's a waste of money it's a waste of time a waste of energy as well as a waste of space so I would encourage you to thoroughly assess what your family already enjoys. Okay. We got our last cup right here. All right. So as you can see, we have many sales cups already, already done here. All right. Already filled with soil. Okay. And these are now ready to go. Prepared for your seeds. Okay. But what I would suggest is making sure that you you assess what your family already eats. And, it, and as well as what your family may want to try. That was something when I introduced beets to my family, honey. First of all, they didn't know. Because they were getting in the juice. <laughs> so I didn't have to deal with the ew, 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 this is disgusting hold on y'all the wind blowing, the Lord want to have his way <laughs> okay but when I first introduced when I decided I wanted to grow beets and have my family eating things like beets and carrots I, uh, I introduced it to them through juicing, through juices, through smoothies, different things like that, and especially carrots. My kids were very anti-carrots for a long time. And what I ended up doing in, um, and how I incorporated it in the food that they ate, I used to shred it up real thin like, you know, on the grater, and I would put in spaghetti. After I'm done with that cooking that spaghetti, cooking it nice, and it's all the way mixed up, I would garnish it with lots of carrots and then I'll mix it all in. Mix it all in. Okay? They didn't know. They didn't know at all. And when I would tell them, they would when they started getting hip to what it was, I'ma tell you, my um middle son, he thought it was cheese. <laughs> he was like, This cheese is crunchy. And I said, Oh, this that's good for you. That's actually carrots. You know? Um so when I was able to give it to them without it being mixed, it was not a, a odd taste in their mouth. It was something that was familiar. And I always paired it with things, things like hummus. If I'm giving, to them, giving them a whole carrot, um, I would give it to them sliced up, you know, and give it to them with something like hummus. Uh, hummus comes in a variety of, uh, of flavors. You can have hummus that flavored like vegetables you can even have hummus flavored like brownies um and my kids that's one of the main ones that we have here but hummus is made out of chickpeas garbanzo beans so 
um, knowing that they are getting that nutrition but still enjoying it is paramount. Okay, so let's get back to what we we're talking about. We got all of our we got all of our, all of our cups that we label. All right, nice inexpensive cups label. So now it's time to go ahead and put in our seeds. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is when you purchase a seed, and I'm not promoting this particular brand. I do know I'm noticing that I have mainly this brand <laughs> um, here. Um, this, these were the types of this brand as well as uh, two other brands that I'm more comfortable with because I have a history with them. I, I, I utilize their seeds more often. So this, is, this brand is also one of my favorite. It's called Fairy Morse. But one thing I want you to pay attention to is the instructions on the back of your seeds because not all seeds are sown the same, okay? Not all seeds are sown the same. Some seeds have a requirement that you make a hole, put it in that's an inch deep. Some seeds say just move a little bit of the top soil over and then just lay it on top of the soil and then sprinkle a little bit of soil on top. So it's important to look at the information on your seed uh, on your seed packets another thing is to look also at your days to harvest so here's spinach here's the spinach pack i'm gonna just get closer you know i'm trying to be like you sis, sis i'm trying to be like you out there i'm trying to be like you okay so here's our spinach pack. Now I'm gonna flip this over so you can see how many days it is to harvest. Right there, it says 45 days to harvest. Now, some people wanna know, well, when am I gonna start seeing anything growing? Here it is. Germination is the, 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 the phrase that you use to understand when you should start seeing things, when to expect any type of sprouts, any type of seedlings. These are words that people use that uh, signify the plant growing, that they can actually visually see a plant that is growing. So here it is. Y'all see how many days to germination? Eight to 10 days. Eight to 10 days. So I'm saying today is what, Saturday? You give this to not next Saturday, but the following Tuesday, we should see something. Okay? Eight to ten days. So this 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 is a this is this right here is letting you know when you will see the information on here will let you know when you will see the items that you are growing, as well as when you can expect to start actually getting the food and taking it in the house to eat. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So keep your packets. Keep your packets, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go through here and find my spinach. Here's my spinach. Here's a spinach. I think I have another spinach one. Maybe I only did one spinach. Let's see. No. Okay, I got both of my spinaches here. Let me move back now. Sis said, grow your own food. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, we got our spinach pack here. Our instructions say it just like this. It says, place one seed every two inches and cover the soil. The plant depth, oh, so that was if we were putting it outside. You can plant this inside. You can start planting it inside as well. The planting depth, this means how deep you need to put your seed in. The planting depth is a half an inch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up this seed packet. Oh, there go my friend Sarah. I'm going to open up this seed packet. Y'all see the seeds? Can you see the seeds? Hold on. See the seeds there? They're spinach seeds. A lot of people, I, I used to be so fascinated with, <laughs> with like what a seed would look like for 
this, you know. And the way how this seed comes about, because you made me think, well, where does the seed look like? I don't see where it is when I'm eating spinach. Where is the seed? So if you let your plants grow and you never harvest them, there will be a flower that comes from them. And actually, a spinach flower is beautiful, okay? But once you start seeing the flower on the plant, it is no longer edible. It has, no, it has removed all its nutrition from the leaves so the goal is to once you start seeing your harvest and you're going to start looking at that plant and it's going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger right and it's going to look so pretty for some of you you may think oh my goodness it's so cute i don't even want to touch it i feel so proud i want to show it off but the thing is if you do not start harvesting it you will lose your plant okay to seeds now it will create its flowers on the plant and once those flowers come you still don't if you're not harvesting if you're choosing to grow plants for seeds which a lot of people do and i do this as well to grow the plants for seeds you will let it go to flower but if you are wanting the plant to supply nutrition for your family within this year or within the time that you, you know within a reasonable amount of time for it, you can actually eat it, you will want to avoid your plant flowering, okay, from uh, at all costs. You will want to avoid, and I mean any type of plant that has especially greens. If you are eating it like your cilantro, your herbs, uh, not, well, not your herbs, because your herbs actually sometimes need, you need the flowers, like chamomile, you need the flowers, lavenders, you need the flower, okay, there's nutritional value in the flower, but things like um, cilantro, um, your broccoli, those types of things, you do not want it to flower, okay, because you want the nutrition, you want all that energy to be put into the plant, all right, getting back to my spinach plant, we're going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and put this in here let me make sure I'm gonna get this so we're sewing it a half an inch so how many seeds are you putting in there LA how many seeds the packet says one the packet says one seed so I got two two things here so I am getting me a little indention here Give me a little indention there, okay? And I'm dropping that seed into that little indention, and then I'm covering it up with the soil. Same with the next cup. Okay. Our spinach is done. It's already sown, okay? All right. Now, I'm not going to do all of these with you guys on the, from, on the, um, on the live because I know I, know I want to cover some other information. But when this video is over, I'm going to go ahead and put all of those seeds, all the seeds according to its label, inside its cup. Okay? And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of water. And I'm not going to turn because I'm not turning my water hose on. And when I tell you I'm taking a little bit of water almost like a tablespoon and i'm going to pour it into my cups each one of my cups within a moment's time that amount of water is going to go all the way through this cup and it's the the excess water is going to drain what's important is that while it is still in seedling form with no sprouts that you let your stuff drain within this pan because the reason why I want to say that is because in case your seedling needs some extra water it can pull from the reservoir that's already in this pan so it will pull so that means you're not having to come here and do do this almost every single day because after you watered your seeds that one time I'm about to tell you something, and it's going to sound strange. It's going to sound strange to some of you. But you need to now, after you've watered all of your stuff, you need to put this whole pan in a dark place. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
cover this pan with aluminum foil. And I would suggest you do the same thing too. You'll get you, while you at Dollar Tree, getting your cups, getting your pan, you get you a nice wide roll, a nice wide roll of aluminum foil. And you cover your whole pan. Why you want me to do that, L.A.? Because what you're doing is you're creating a greenhouse. You're creating a greenhouse that sweat and the humidity from that moisture mixed with that soil will create a humid environment. What's important to do is to take that covered pan filled with, your, filled with the seeds that are in the cups, okay, and it has that water in there. When you put it in a dark environment, it imitates the same thing as the ground once you dig a hole in the ground and you put it down put that it creates that dark environment for that seed to germinate okay now if you have this one little tool in your home this will actually help and and, and kind of um uh power steer like you know push your seeds germinating and it is a heating pad so if you have one of those electric heating pads this is not if you don't have one you don't have to worry about that you don't need to do that but if you do you can take your pan that is covered up with aluminum foil in that dark place put that heating pad on low up under your pan up under your pan and I would say let it be on low for close to two or three hours a day okay two two if you haven't seen any germination okay I mean three if you haven't seen any germination but if you start seeing any type of seedlings I would say okay bring that time down make it two hours make it one hour make it 45 minutes okay that way you pretty much you're promoting your 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 germination to pretty much get a nice jump start it's saying come on hurry up hurry up it's creating that humid condition even more it's hot up in here and so that sea is once it starts getting hot in that environment that sea will start breaking open and that 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 plant will start coming up rising up okay so those are my tips for when you start a garden all right starting now Let's talk about L.A. Can my plant just live in this? I've had people ask me that. Can't I just, you know, keep transferring it to another big, bigger vessel, bigger vessel, bigger vessel? You can. That is doable, okay? But what I want to mention is that some plants, okay, you won't allow you to, to grow to its fullest capacity all right um especially plants that are like trees uh i have a friend that you know she has um, a lemon tree and she grows her lemon tree on her patio it's like a myers lemon tree and she grows her myers lemon tree on her patio the thing is she can never break through over seven lemons well, the beauty of a tree is that a tree is meant to be in the earth. So while you can continue your gardening process, not in cups this size, but in larger vessels, um, if your tree, if your plant has, um, has a growth pattern that will need a larger space, you need to provide that space so that you may have um, what you are looking for, what you are sowing, that you may reap exactly what you're sowing, okay? So I'm going to show you some wonderful ways. If you decide, um, like myself, I'm doing a lot more container gardening this year. Uh, usually I do a lot of earth gardening in raised beds or in the ground, but this year I'm only doing container gardening. Um, and there's very unconventional, but I am not sowing anything into the ground. I'm not growing anything into the ground. Uh, I'm not growing anything in my plants. I mean, not growing anything in my plants that needs to be only in the ground. So that means its root system can survive a container. All right. So I'm going to show you some inexpensive products.
that I use that that are also uh, easy to move around and be mobile. Here we are. This is a bucket. This is a bucket. Now, first, let me just say this. Well, LA, you don't have no cute little pots. You don't have it. Listen here. I love pots. I love beauty stuff. I got pots. Okay. But the thing is, is that there are some things I need to be able to uh, withstand the weight of what I'm growing. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys some of the things I have growing on the patio up there. But for right now, I want to give you some information that you can use right away. Okay. So in case you don't go somewhere and there's like these pretty little pots whatever you can go right to home depot and lowe's and get this stuff this bucket alone is two dollars it's two dollars okay this bucket right here which is five gallons this is six dollars okay. no actually this is five dollars this is two dollars at lowe's right now the reason why i have these buckets specifically is because of this label food grade BPA free it will be of course easy for me to go buy buckets that say like my favorite team on it or I can use that empty paint bucket uh, that I haven't used but what I don't want is chemicals leaching into the food that I'm going to be growing for my family so choosing a bucket that is BPA free that is already suitable for food grade is essential for growing your food okay yes you can risk it all and grow it in something else but make sure you find you something if you if you really want to be conscientious of what you're growing and what's in your food that's how i am that's how everyone in my family is we want to know what's in our food we don't want to be surprised and shocked by something okay we get food grade buckets okay we have pots but they are also food grade pots there are plenty of pots on the market but not all pots are made equal okay some pots are meant for your flowers things that you are not going to eat and there are some things and some pots that are meant for you to be able to put it in and if it is it will be labeled it will be labeled okay all right so that was that was that one little thing that i wanted to show you about that but let me show you another option. If the buckets are not suitable for what you're trying to do, or you're saying, well, LA, I have a large space, but I still would like to keep my things in a container. Something where it can be contained. And the buckets, mm, I don't really like it. I want to start seeing what things look differently. I have something also very inexpensive for you to use. Y'all ready for this? Let's see. Here we go. This is a baby swimming pool. What they call like a, a, a wading pool. This pool was at Family Dollar for $8. Now what I plan to do is I plan to make this pool like a raised bed okay i will drill three quarter holes so i have the drill bits that can can drill holes pretty much about that size pretty much i'm going to drill holes everywhere you see there are these little fake bubble holes okay to make sure that my plants are draining properly so the reason why I wanted to show you this because say you have a patio space and you stay in an apartment and you want to go ahead and start growing your food. This right, this size right here will not take up that much space at all. Same with those buckets. It will not take up that much space at all. And you can really get all the plant things that we planted that are down there. We can put all of that in here. Once they start seedling and start growing up, we can put all of what we just have, all of those cups that we have, we can plant those in here, pull them out the dirt, you know, pull them out the cups and 
plant each one, which is what we're going to do in a few weeks from now. Um, Cause I'm going to get back on here so you can see me do that as well. But those types of things can be done. That is still very inexpensive. You can grow your family's food in a baby pool and still save money. Just the, that, that one spinach that we grow will grow at least 30 leaves on that one spinach. So, like I said, you can go to the grocery store and purchase a bundle of leaves or a bag of spinach. And that bag of spinach, which you know your body needs, is close to 3 or $4. Or you can buy a pack of seeds that's $1.44. Huh? $1.44. And have as many... I mean, even if you wanted to just have a whole baby pool filled with dirt and spinach, that's your business. You can do that. Okay. All right. So I wanted to show you guys that. And I wanted to also give you guys a preview of what I have grown here. All of these things were were started either from seeds or from seedlings, baby like starts that you can just purchase at like your nursery or like Lowe's or something like that. Okay. Let me turn this thing around. All right. Some of the things I already have planted out here. We have tomato. Tomato hasn't made its shine yet. It hasn't came up in here yet. But once I started seeing these yellow flowers, you see that right there? The plant, the tomatoes are going to come from these things. So we got a few yellow flowers on here. As soon as we get some pollinators out here, the tomatoes will be on their way. We have basil. We have rosemary. We have lavender. And our, and our flowers are getting here. Just a few. And this is going to take over. As you can see, these types of things, they take over. So, y'all, give it a few weeks. This whole pot will fill, be filled with its actual plant. We have right here uh, jalapenos. And as you see, we got some starts coming in. They, they're starting. And I planted all of these at the same time. Here is uh, sweet peppers. We got sweet peppers growing in right here. And here's the start of some peppers right there. Okay, the start. This plant right here is strawberries. We got strawberries coming in. Here's one of my favorite. We got beets. And one beautiful thing about beets is you can eat the beets, okay? You can juice the beets, but the but the uh, foliage is also edible. It is also edible. You saw that. You saw tear that up a little bit with a little bit of light salt, honey. You are gonna have you a ball. Now over here, and, and nothing's in these blue uh, Lowe's tubs. That's why they're flipped over. But they are um, helping me keep things. Um, up off the ground over here in these four is something I wanted to show you because it is a concept that I fell in love with years ago and it's called growing from your groceries and I don't know if I made that up or if I saw that somewhere but I've been growing from my from my groceries for about three years and what that means is the food that I've purchased from the store, Yukon potatoes, and that's what I, I have planted here. Once I start seeing those little seedling buds on them, I put them in the ground. Or I put them in a pot and I put dirt on top of it. In these pots here are potatoes that I bought from the grocery store. Yukon potatoes. Okay. The little seedling buds, you know what I'm talking about, right? That little bud on there where it starts showing. It's like, oh, man, this, this, these potatoes shouldn't be ate. You need to throw these in the trash, right? Instead of throwing them in the trash, okay, get your pot. Get your big old bucket. You put this much, you put close to three inches of soil in the bottom of that bucket. Then you sit your potatoes in there. Two, two or three potatoes can fit. In here, two small or medium sized potatoes can fit in these buckets. Okay, if they're real small, two or three, put three in there. You put three inches of dirt, then you put those potatoes on top of that dirt with the seed 
with the bud seed facing up okay then on top of that those potatoes you put in nine to ten inches of soil on top of that and that's what I did so when I first started I put in dirt it came up to about right here okay came up to about right here I put my potatoes so my potatoes my original potatoes are right up in this area then I put dirt all the way up to about right here okay and from there the seeds that were those buds that was on those seeds that, that were on those potatoes which are now seeds grew up and burst through the top layer of my soil now once these once these actually once these plants reach this height once these plants reach this height what i plan to do is to put the soil more soil in here to be at the same height as my rim and i will still continually water it and what's going to happen is these buckets are going to get heavier and heavier because the the that one seed which was now a potato is going that plant that grows up is going to sprout out off of the stem more potatoes from this one bucket just from one bucket I should yield 14 potatoes 14 from how many two 14 potatoes from two y'all do the math y'all do the math Okay, this is what I'm saying this to say this. You can grow your own food. For some of us, buying food fresh is expensive. For some of us, eating healthy is expensive. But medical bills are higher. That's what I have to tell myself every single time I look at something and say, oh, well, that bag of kale is so much, but medical bills are higher. Medical bills are higher. And I would not want to be in nobody's hospital bed because of my immune deficiency because I chose not to eat healthy when, the when it's available for me to do so. Okay, y'all hear me, right? Here we go. Let's finish looking at what's all over here. So we got that. We got those potatoes growing. And 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 you see how this is bursting through? And, and, and common sense would be like, well, just move that out the way so they can continue bursting through. No, you don't want to do that because what you're going to do is weaken the stem. Them bursting through that soil, that top layer of soil is strengthening that stem. Okay, and I need those stems to be strong because they gonna, each stem is going to have at least four or five potatoes that's going to sprout out from the side of it okay so don't try to help it out you ain't helping nobody honey you want them potatoes okay you want all your potato you want all your you want all your food 14 potatoes from two is amazing do you plant the whole spud yes i plant the whole thing the entire potato matter of fact i think i could post a picture in the comments next we got over here is spaghetti squash now this is a winter squash okay these are this is a squash that is mostly seen in the winter time spaghetti squash and pumpkins these types of things are mostly seen in the fall in the winter time okay so, but you can grow them in the summer and honey when i tell you it's gonna be the best i love spaghetti squash especially for my ramen when i make my ramen or when i'm eating my spaghetti and instead of actually having spaghetti noodles i can use the inside of a spaghetti squash and it has like a little sweet taste to it but honey it's it's amazing it's amazing i made me alfredo with my spaghetti squash and you barely can taste it i done passed it on to my kids my kids don't know honey they don't know they're not eating spaghetti out the box they think oh it's spaghetti because it's stringy it look like get it get your kids spaghetti squash hello get them nutritions in they buy okay but um uh, this is the spaghetti squash okay it, we don't have anything 
growing from it yet. Soon, this whole plant will be on the ground. It's going to take over. LaShawn, you laughing. You know me, honey. I would, My kids would eat this vegetables, honey, and, and say something. Say something. You know, that's, that's how I am. Okay, don't pay attention to this. This was a perennial that I bought on clearance, and it, it, it barely lasted longer than I, you know, it was to put it in the car. So don't, don't look at that. All right, next over here, we got grapes. Concord grapes. Now, y'all thinking, L.A., you can put the grapes in a pot? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You give me one more month. I'm going to show you that bowl of grapes. I did it before. Grapes grow. Grapes grow. Plant you some grapes, honey. Plant you some grapes. Have your snacks growing in the backyard for you and your family. It's possible. Okay, and one thing I love about grapes, once you harvest them, most of the things that I have here, and I'm going to go over which ones that does this, that have this behavior. Most of the things I have here grow right back. Okay, and there's only a few things that I grow that once you harvest it, you can't use, it, it ain't going to grow nothing else after that. Things like onions, carrots. Once you harvest the onion, honey, ain't no onion coming after that. Okay. Um, once you harvest carrots, ain't no carrots coming up out that hole again. That, that, that was it. You, what you do is you, you, uh, plant more seeds. Okay. You plant more seeds. One thing I like to do when I'm planting carrots, is called succession, uh, gardening. And so once you see, once I see that little, that little sprout happening, and this is a lot of information for one live. And I guess I'm going to break it up into small little ones too after this and have it on our, my YouTube channel or on our, my website, uh, which is www.likewiseliving.com. And I'll have that available for you. But succession gardening is as soon as you see a sprouting, okay, you plant another row of seeds. That way, once that, that sprouting one grows up to be mature, you harvest that, and then you got another row that's growing, and, and so on and so on. You understand what I'm saying? It it it, it kind of keeps the food coming. It keeps you. It gives you groceries consistently. You're like, oh, we ran out of carrots. Oh no, it's some more in the backyard. Okay. All right. So we got that growing over there. Then we can come over here. We got green beans coming in. We got green beans coming in, and what? And these are the type of green beans that they're going to start climbing up this little pole. There are a variety of green beans. There are a variety of green beans that are bush. Um, and that was what we just planted over there. So that's going to be a bush, a big bush. Okay, and you can just pull the green beans off. All right, and then you have that kind, that, that variety where it um, will trail. It will kind of do like a, a, what you call climb. It will start climbing up something that is next to. So that's why it's right there next to the uh, patio poles. Then we got our medicinals over here. We have our German thyme, our uh, peppermint. Well, actually, no, that's spearmint. We have our oregano here. And then we have our lemon balm. And when I tell y'all this right here, this right here pretty much can do anything. For all the way from stomach irritations and constipations and diarrhea all the way to mosquito bites this this plant alone will repel bugs from my entire house if i put this in front of the house honey or if i take a leaf listen to me if i take a leaf and rub this on my body not a bug coming next to me not one okay it don't want to be a part of me at all lemon balm i'm gonna write up i'm gonna do a little write up so y'all can know Get you some lemon balm. If you can't find the lemon balm seeds, order you some lemon balm seeds. Go on rareseeds.com. They got you. Rare seeds. www.rareseeds.com. Let me put that in here. Rareseeds.com. Okay. They got you. All right, let's come on over here. And y'all forgive this this uh this lettuce plant because we had tacos today, so we a little short over here. Now I got these two little planters from Dollar Tree, so and they and they are they're food grade suitable as well. There's not that many at Dollar Tree that's food grade suitable, but these are. So 
Uh, this was actually a large thing of lettuce. Uh, however, we had our uh, some tacos and nachos today. And these are collard greens. Collard greens growing in nice and beautiful right there. And then over here, like I said, we had tacos and nachos. So our cilantro is looking it is looking uh sparing but it was it was very full because you know it's a wonderful it's a wonderful addition to to uh mexican dishes okay and then i'm gonna just come on over here i got just one thing planted in the earth but that ain't got no no container next to it at all and it you can plant this in a container if you wanted to it, it won't hurt but I just needed to, I wanted to plant it in this dirt over here. But you got right here some onions growing right there. Onions growing in this spot on back. Okay. All the things I've showed you, those seeds didn't even go over $15. So when you think it's not possible for you to grow your own food, that's a lie. That's a lie. You can grow your own food. You can even grow your own food from your groceries. If you buy green onions, you can set those green onions in the ground. After you're done and it got that root on it, which is crazy to me. These people sell you the, the vegetable with the root on it. You can go ahead and grow your green onions again. You can grow your celery again after it's done. I'll do another segment on how you can grow your groceries. How about that? But that's about it, y'all. I really wanted to um, do this. I've been itching to do this for so long. And then, of course, like I said, I'll have more of a comprehensive guide in the future. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and begin and start now with what I said I was going to do. Um, so that you may have the tools that you, that you need. And that you can remove those contingencies, all the excuses that so many people have, you know, when it comes down to our health. Our health is wealth. And God has given us these tools. He's given us the earth to glean from, to supply us the things that we need. So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this. Y'all got any questions? Let me read the, um, let me read the. The comments there's so much peace when you put your hands in dirt and connect with the earth i think we're most like god when we are growing things yes it really is therapeutic he walks and talks with you in the garden absolutely i feel that i feel like i am connecting with the father with the creator okay you know i'm trying to be like you sis i have all sorts of things growing Always try something. Try something. I'm I'm big on growing what I'm used to and then growing two things I don't know nothing about. <laughs> okay. So I haven't necessarily um picked anything this year yet that I don't know nothing about. Um I'm I'm really considering growing uh raspberry leaf and um different different things. Uh different medicinal herbs so I'm, I'm i'm planning on trying those i just don't know when i'm gonna get my little order in together anybody got any questions she says i use a sippy cup for watering when watering seeds or seedlings perfect because you don't need a lot of water when you're watering seeds i can never get watermelon here the animals eat it so i'll watch yours right <laughs> okay i'm going through them it looks like i done got through what shine are you talking about oh my <laughs> yes 14 potatoes from two is amazing yes you can grow food from your groceries absolutely all right y'all since y'all got any questions and if you have any more questions or have any more statements to say feel free put it in the comments y'all i'm i'm not on facebook directly right now i'm actually using my husband's phone but um likewise living account i'm right here with you with that Great job, sis. I love you. I love you, too. I love y'all, too. I'm excited. I'm excited for y'all. And hopefully, this spurs some, some inspiration for you so that you can go ahead and, and get you some seeds in the dirt.
so that your family can so your family can start experiencing a more healthier lifestyle all right y'all i love y'all i can't wait to see y'all um in your garden as well and see y'all next time